So we've talked about asymptotic stability. And asymptotic stability then um, was something we could examine using Lyapunov's second method. Now we can actually continue on using Lyapunov's second method and actually look at the more um, strict uh, stability property of both quadratic and exponential stability. Okay, so here's our quadratic Lyapunov function. X dot is equal to f of x. If we actually, uh, so notice that I showed you a, a formula that involved the gradient. We can actually use a simpler formula for the derivative along the system trajectory. So if I, if I have this expression, I have, I can write it out this way. I can use the, the product rule. Okay, so in this case, my v of x is a quadratic quantity, and that simplifies the calculation of the derivative. So in this case, I have x dot px plus x transpose p x dot. So it's just the product rule. I differentiate this term. I differentiate this term. And, and that's, that's what I use now for my uh, derivative along the system trajectory. Okay, that is, so along the system trajectory, x dot is equal to f of x. So x dot transpose is f of x transpose. Here, this is f of x. And so I can easily use, this in the quadratic case, this form of the Lyapunov function instead of the other, the gradient version. So the gradient version still works, but here I don't need that. I can actually use it this way. And this is more, in some ways, more intuitive to look at. Okay, so now suppose we have some function q of x. And suppose now our derivative along the system trajectory can be factored into a quadratic form in x. So here, notice here, q may be a function of x, and I also have an x transpose on the left, x on the right. Okay, so recall that for quadratic stability, we need this quantity. The derivative of x of t p norm squared this is actually v of x, okay? This is actually v of x. When we first saw this, it was like, what in the world, and why in the world, and whew. But now, this is actually v dot, okay? This is actually v dot, derivative of, so this is actually v, and this is the derivative with respect to time of that. And so this is saying v dot must be less than or equal to alpha times the norm, the two norm of x, okay? So remember, so in our case, v of x is the p norm of x squared. And so this inequality, if we in fact have this equal, then v dot is given by this expression, where I have q as a function of x. So v dot is equal to minus x transpose qx and this quantity must be strictly less than or equal to minus alpha x transpose x. Okay, so what this, this inequal, since this is true for any non-zero x, this is equivalent to saying that if I take this over to the other side, I have basically this matrix inequality. Q minus alpha i must be greater than or equal to zero. This is a positive semi-definite matrix. Okay, so if for, for all x, this is a positive semi-definite matrix, then we have quadratic stability. So at first, the quadratic stability definition looked really strange and forbidding, but now it's very tangible. And it actually boils down to this. If we can look at our system, if we can simplify our system along the, our function along the system trajectory and end up with a Q here that is an, then, and if the Q satisfies this relationship, then we are, um, we're good. We have quadratic stability. So we actually have an explicit way using Lyapunov theory of evaluating quadratic stability. We didn't, when we first looked at it, it was like strange. It's like, what does that even mean? But now we can see exactly what it means and it comes directly from Lyapunov's direct method. We can also look at exponential stability. Suppose that we have this quantity here. Again, we're able to factor our derivative along the system trajectory this way. For exponential stability, exponential stability re basically requires that v dot of x 
it be less than or equal to some constant times v of x. Notice that if v of x is positive definite, then this quantity is negative definite, and so we actually have that relationship. So v dot of x we saw is given by this expression. This is given by this expression. So notice that these are both the same norms. In the quadratic stability case, this was just the regular Euclidean norm. Here we have the same p-norm in both terms. Okay, So we have that condition. So this condition is equivalent to this condition. And this condition, for this condition to be true for all x, basically means that q minus alpha p must be greater than or equal to. So instead of alpha i, I have alpha p. And so we have another condition that's very similar that can, can be used to establish quadratic stability, or rather exponential stability for a system. And again, this can hold for linear systems or nonlinear systems.